Okay guys, in this video lesson, we're gonna move on to the next part of this unit, uh, dealing with how we can graphically show motion, okay? Now, when it comes to graphs, things that they do for us is it's about speed, really. They quickly show us information, and we can do some quick estimating, and we can do some simple math, and actually do some calculating based off the graph. Now, in particular, graphs do a great job of showing us position, which is in meters. Displacement, which is also in meters, remember now displacement, is the change in position. Velocity, which is meters over time, so now we're looking at an x and y axis. And then accelerations also, which is velocity divided by time again. Okay, so it's meters per second squared, or velocity divided by time. Okay, so um, the beauty is too, we, go, we get to see the magnitude and that direction of motion as we do this. Now, let's look at this graph, okay? When you're looking at a graph, some things you really want to always do. Number one, most important thing, is look at your axes. What are they trying to tell us? So in this graph, we have an X in meters. So this is a displacement or a position graph, okay? Because it's telling us where we're going horizontally or in the X direction in meters. We have time in seconds, okay? So this represents some object, we don't know what it is, but some object started at position zero, and it moved through time, and where the graphing stopped, it was at position four meters. And that took us one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, let's say eight seconds to do that, okay? So looking at this graph then, we can determine lots of things. We can determine which, how it is being displaced. We can see that it is being displaced in a positive direction. We can determine that it is having a certain amount of time to make that displacement. We can find the slope of the line. So if we say that we have a rise of two over a one to, let's say, three and a half-ish, is that where two hits? Probably three and a half. So two divided by three and a half, well, two divided by three and a half is gonna give us the slope of our line, and that's gonna be in meters divided by seconds. Well, meters divided by seconds is velocity. So this simple line tells us both displacement, position, and velocity. It also tells us that um, because it's a straight line that we're not accelerating because the displacement is consistent. It's a consistent change of displacement, which means your velocity or your slope is not changing, okay? So lots of information about this graph, all right? Now, keep in mind, all of our motion graphs will be versus time, okay? We call, we need that because you can't move without taking time to move. Even light takes time to move. Everything takes time to move. That means that time is our independent variable. Now, independent variables are always put on your x axis. How we move and the movement we have is dependent on how long it takes. So the x positioning, which we represent on the y axis here, is dependent on that. So we have our position or our displacement over our time. So we have dependent variable versus our independent variable here. Now in displacement versus time graphs, um, we actually can map out the movement of an object. So we have our little car down here. I took a picture of my car sitting in my garage and uh, take, we're gonna take a little uh, drive here. So if I take off and do it for a drive, okay, Okay, so as the car moved, we also saw the graph being built. We're gonna do that one more time. The goal here is to be able to map out what's going on. So here we have the car moving at the first two seconds and it has a certain slope. Then the slope changes, okay? Then it's not moving. Then the slope changes again. Now we go from being a positive slope to a negative slope, and then we go back again, right? So all those movements, if we take a look, allows us to actually talk about what do we know from this, okay? So we're gonna take that movement, which we saw, and if you wanna back up the video and watch it again, you can. And now let's map out what is everything we can say about what's going on here, okay? So we have lots of questions here. 
And these are all things that if you look at a position or a displacement versus time graph, you should be able to de determine, all right? Um, you could expect to see something like this on a quiz or test and have to answer questions very similar to this about what's going on. So first of all, what does the slope of the, gra the graph indicate? All right, so we have a slope. What does the slope tell us? Well, the slope tells us our rise over our run. Well, rise over run is meters per second. Meters per second is a velocity. All right, so the slope tells us what is our velocity. We have a positive slope here. If we take a look, it, it, we go up five meters in one, two seconds. So we have five divided by two, or 2.5. So we go 2.5 meters per second, okay? Um, so that tells us our velocity during the segment A is 2.5 meters per second. That's what the slope is telling us. It is telling us the velocity. How do you determine the direction here? Okay, so where does direction come from? Time always moves in a positive direction, but position can be positive or negative. All right, there's no indicator in the graph if that's left, right, north, south, east, west, up, down, there's nothing there. All we know is that as a car moves forward, because we see the front of the car, it moves forward, we call that positive, and when it ran in reverse, we called that negative, okay? So direction is determined by what side of the origin on your y-axis is the graph. So everything up here is the positive direction. This little segment down here is our negative direction, okay? So at one point, we ended up going negative into the negative side of our movement. What's the difference between segment A and B? Okay, well, A and B, let's talk about what's the same. They both have positive slopes, positive direction, positive displacement, okay? The only difference is, is the slope is different. So between A and B, it's moving faster at B because it has a steeper slope, okay? You could calculate that and say, well, at B, it went up five and over one. So here it has a speed or a velocity of positive five meters per second. Here it was only 2.5 meters per second, so this is double the speed. That's the difference between those two. So what's unique about segment C? Okay, so we see no slope. No slope means no velocity. It's not moving. Okay, anytime you have a horizontal line when you're graphing position, you're not moving. Okay, because your position is not changing, but time is ticking away. So if you can't move, to get time to take away to first slope to line of zero, okay? You could say that the slope is zero, well zero meters per second is not moving. Uh, what is the velocity at segment F? So now calculate it, right? So we start at negative five, we go up to zero, and we go up to five. So it was 10 or five, we went 10 meters in two seconds. So 10 divided by two is five meters per second, okay? So we actually can calculate using the graph the velocity that would be a positive five meters per second. What about E? So E starts at 20 and in one second it drops down to 25. So the speed here okay is 25 meters per second. That's not the velocity. The velocity is a negative 25 meters per second okay because it's a negative slope. What's happening at the graph crosses zero? Well, it's crossing the origins, right? It's not stopping. It's not accelerating. The car just happens to pass over its original starting point because this is where it originally started. It crosses the origin, okay? Some people tend to think it's coming to a stop here and then doing something else. That's not the case for position graphs. It's just crossing its original position. Where we get the highest velocity, okay? So if we take a look, A is definitely not, B is not, C is zero, okay? D, E, and F, F is more like D, so it's either D or E if you just look visually. And <clears throat> in one second, D went up 10, and in one second, E went down 25. So E has the highest velocity. Now you might not like that, because you might think, well, that's a negative, right? It's a negative 25 meters per second. How can a negative number be the highest? Remember, in physics, many times, the lowest value is zero. In any direction away from that, is a higher magnitude. So a negative 25 is faster or a higher velocity than a positive 10 would be. Okay. What time segments have the same velocity? Well, we're looking for the same slope here, right? So if we take a look, B goes up five 
over 1, so it's 5 meters per second. F went up 10 over 2, it's 5 meters per second. So B and F, they have the same slope. They have the same velocity. Um, what's the displacement after segment B? Okay, So let's take a look. We went up 5, went up 10, so our displacement is 10. Went 10 meters, right? It doesn't matter that there's a kink in our line. After segment B, from here to here, we went 10 meters. What about F? Okay. Um, displacement after F. So we go way to here. The overall displacement, even though we moved here, 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 and we moved here, at the very end, our displacement, not our distance, right? Distance would be adding up. It went 5 and then it went up to 10, and then it went here. And you need to add this. Displacement is just the net. So we ended at 5. So our displacement here is 5 meters after F. Okay. Yes, the car moved a lot more than that. This distance is more, but the displacement is just 5 meters. All right. Uh, why is a graph not possible? Okay. So if you take a look, think about that for a second. Why is a graph not possible? Or what is missing? Hopefully, you don't like the fact that the car was going two and a half meters per second and then magically was going five. And then in the next instant, it wasn't moving. So how do you go from going five meters per second, which is a fast run, to not moving? Like that. You can't. Okay, so what's missing here is we're not graphing the accelerations. We're not graphing the changes that happen to the velocity. Everything is straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line, straight line. Okay, once we start to look at the idea of accelerations, we know that these points here can't be rigid and jagged. There has to be a curve here because we need to change the velocity or change the slope, right? Because velocity is slope. Well, you can't go from having 5 meters per second to 0 without having, you know, a 4.9, 4.8, 4.7, 4.6, you know, all the way down to a 0. So there has to be a change in slope, okay, or a curve here, all right? So that's what we're missing in this piece is that part. All right, take a minute, look at this graph, because could you answer similar questions about what's going on if you're given a graph like this? Oh, we'll see the car move one more time, too, looks like here. And at the end, it does end. It started here. It ends only five meters away. So that's our displacement we talked about before. Okay, so that being said, what do D versus T graphs tell us? Well, position, okay? The position is the magnitude that we see on the y-axis, okay? Um, so is it a plus five, a minus four? What is it? That's our position, right? Notice I say it's on the y-axis. It can be a position in the x direction, so we could say it's moving horizontal. It could be north, it could be south, it could be east, it could be west, it could be up, it could be down. But it's just that magnitude on that y-axis. Our displacement is that change in magnitude. So it's your final minus your initial. And we'll actually get a formula for that shortly. Okay? So it's always a change in magnitude. This is the line between the two points. Our velocity is our slope. Make sure you include positives and negatives because if you have a positive slope, that means you have a positive displacement. If you have a negative slope, that means you're getting a negative displacement or you are either going positive velocity or negative velocity. It means very different things because you can go in the opposite directions. And finally, a D versus T graph or displacement graph does tell us accelerations. It's hard for us to find mathematical pieces with that in simple looks, simple line stuff. Because um, it's a curve. We couldn't figure out curves using graphical stuff. We've done that before in our math classes. But if we see a curve or a parabolic type of line, we know that that's an acceleration happening in a D versus T graph. All right. Now, that's enough information. We should be able to go into our homework, which is on graphing motion, to do that. The one thing that we didn't look at is what happens when we include accelerations or need to track the changes in velocities. So what happens when it's not good enough just to say, yeah, there is an acceleration here, but instead we want to know what is the acceleration? What is the numerical value for that acceleration? Or how is velocity changing through time? Okay, What do we need to do in that case?
We will deal with that in our next video lesson. Thank you.